So Nintendo just revealed that Super Smash Bros. Wii U and 3DS is getting a new stage based on Super Mario Maker. And it looks pretty awesome, being extremely true to the game itself. And you know what that means, it's time to break out the old analysis machine and see what secrets a trailer might be hiding. Okay, so of course one of the big things about this level is that, like the game itself, it's different every time you play on it. And we can already see a ton of variety in the stage even based on just a few scenes in the trailer. For instance, some of the versions we see includes one that has a giant pit in the middle, another has a couple of pipes dividing the level in half, whereas yet another is half ground and half lava. But like the game itself, the level needs to actually be built before you can play on it. So at the start of every match, each player starts on the same floating platform as in Super Mario Maker, while the level gets quickly built below. But check this out! Even though the platforms haven't yet been fully filled in, we can see both Yoshi and Marth land on thin air, which is exactly where the platforms will appear a few moments later when they're added by hand. So even though you may beat the hand to the punch, the level is still active even if you can't see it. In fact, Yoshi actually ground pounds right through a brick that doesn't even exist yet. Look, you can see the fragments flying away. And sure enough, when the hand fills in the details just a moment later, it leaves out the now destroyed brick. But of course, the trailer does mention that the hand will eventually fill in any destroyed bricks too. At any rate, part of the reason the levels can be so diverse is that there are a ton of objects left directly from Super Mario Maker that can be used in each stage. Such as blocks of all types, including bricks, ice blocks, and question blocks, which we're guessing probably spawn Smash Brothers items when they're hit. But interestingly, every time a question block is shown on screen, it's always part of a set, with a brick on either side. Yes, even in this scene where Mark destroys one of the bricks before it even spawns. So maybe the question block only appears as a set with the other two bricks. Next up are the platforms, including floating ones, mushroom ones, moving platforms on a track, conveyor belts, bridges, donut lifts which probably drop when you step on them, and then of course a typical ground too, complete with the random details on Super Mario Maker that can appear on it, like flowers, trees, or bushes. And finally, we have a couple of miscellaneous things too, like pipes and lava. Now, everything I've mentioned so far obviously also appeared in Super Mario Maker. Well, sort of. Because while every object is in fact in Super Mario Maker, they don't always appear quite in the same form. Like the ground that forms a slope in many of the scenes. Yep, the hill you see here would actually be impossible to make in the original game. Same thing with the tilted platforms here too. And then there's a lava in this scene. Yeah, yeah, lava does appear in Super Mario Maker too, but only in the castle theme. And even then, it's automatically placed at the bottom of the stage. Whereas here, it's clearly tiled like any other object in the game. But why the changes? After all, Smash Brothers already has plenty of Mario stages that don't feature any slopes at all, nor lava. So why start now, especially when it goes against what's actually in Super Mario Maker? But we can't help but wonder that will always be the case. Because, what if this actually hints at a future update for Super Mario Maker that would add these features? Again, being slope surfaces and the ability to add lava to any part of the level. Now granted, it could be nothing, but Sakurai is obviously privy to insider information. And it would make sense to design a flagship stage to be as close to the final product as possible. So I really wouldn't be shocked if those features pop up in Super Mario Maker fairly soon. Now even though we do see a lot of objects in the trailer, there's even more that we don't see. Like enemies. Because we don't see a single one in the trailer at all. Wait a second, what's that? Are those bullet bills in the background? And then in this scene, we can see a clown car floating along the top. And shortly after that, we can just barely see a Hammer Brother cruising by too. So as it turns out, enemies will actually appear in the stage. But it looks like they'll be relegated cameos in the background. But hold up just one more second. Now both the bullet bills and clown copter can fly. But what about the other enemies, like the Hammer Brothers? How will they appear in the background if they can't fly? Well, if we zoom in here, we can just barely see what appear to be wings on either side of the Hammer Brother. Which means he's likely riding a winged platform. Which we're guessing is how non-flying enemies will make their appearance. Now one cool detail that was in Super Mario Maker itself is that there were multiple curses you could choose from when playing the game. And although we mostly see the human hand curse in the trailer, there is a scene that shows Mario's as well, which confirms that multiple cursors will be appearing in this stage too. In fact, if we look at the picture on the stage selection screen, we can see the cat's paws featured in it, meaning it will appear here too. Okay, we're almost done here, but there's still a few final details I wanted to point out. Now, even though the Super Mario Maker game itself has six different level themes, we only ever see the main world one here, which suggests it might be the only one. But to be fair, it does have four different versions, one for each of the four Mario game styles from Super Mario Maker. And speaking of which, based on the opening scene of the trailer, it looks as if the game theme will actually change while you're playing. Of course, we can see the tile switching effect, but every object also remains in the exact same place, even including the bullet bills in the background which even changed to match the updated theme. So based on that, it looks like changing themes is actually part of the stage and not just a trailer trick. So that's pretty neat and of course extremely true to the game itself. And with that, we're done covering everything we could dig up on the Super Mario Maker stage. But as usual, let us know if we missed anything by posting in the comments below. Thanks for watching and make sure to stay tuned to Game Explained for more on Super Smash Bros. and other things gaming as well.